Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. Help keep this content ad-free by supporting us on patreon.com slash archerygeek. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, archerypass.com, for all your traditional archery needs. That's awesome. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers, and I am here with Leo. Uh, Leo from Sweden. So, hey, Leo, um, I don't want to get your last name wrong. I actually spelled it incorrectly one time. I was trying to text you. What's your last name? Peterson. Just Patterson works. Patterson, that's good. That, well, I wanted to say it right. I want to say, it, you know, we don't get a lot of international uh, talent on the show, but, man, you've been just on fire. And, and you're how old now? Uh, 18. I'm turning 19 in about two weeks. Oh, well, happy early birthday. Thanks for doing this show with us. I really, really appreciate it. And it is what, like 7 p.m. your time or 8 p.m. your time? Yeah, early evening. So early it's... evening. Okay. Good. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. You've been, uh, so you were just recently over here in the United States. Yeah. Do you want to? I was over for. Yeah, go ahead. I was over for the World Games, um, and I was competing as a senior for the Swedish national team. As a senior, as a senior. Um, but you also told me before we got started, you're also on the uh, the uh, junior team. How long can you stay on the junior team for? I have uh, this year and then next year as a junior as well. And then it's going to be all senior after that. So you can, you're on two national teams at the same time? Yes, indeed. That's pretty good. And you guys are really good shooters. Like, I mean, I, well, you, you, you and your teammate uh, were first and second place. At the yeah, games. the Swedish Bearbo team is just amazing. We have Eric Johnson, Martin Ottosson, Fredrik Lundmark, and just for the men's division. Then we have Lina Björklund and Stino Sell, and loads of other good shooters. That's yeah. You guys have some amazing, amazing shooters. What's your next? Uh, what, what's your next foray? What's what's the next thing you're doing? Where are you competing next? Uh, the next thing in Sweden is the field nationals and the three D nationals coming up in two and three weeks, I think. And after that, I will be going to the three D World Championship in Italy. Oh, yeah, that's uh, September. September. Yeah. Uh, early September. Are you looking forward? Hey, I got a quick question for you. Just, I don't want to get too off track here, but does your national team, is your national team sponsored by, you know, your, your government? Like, do you get government funding or do you guys have to fund all that yourself? Uh, most of the travel and stuff are self-funded. But if I compete at the junior team, I get almost every, everything prepaid by the association and the big competitions like the world games are also paid but if we want to go to like the world championships we have to pay ourselves but if we get a medal then we get some sort of kickback oh. so we get some of the money back oh that's good that's very than nothing right where where are you located i'm located in uh, stockholm oh. so i live with my parents at the moment so i moved Moved back here two months ago after I finished finished high school, and I studied archery and economics in a town called Halsberg. You studied archery? That's pretty good. So you you shoot a lot. You shoot a lot of arrows. Yeah, I shoot arrows. I don't have an exact number, but I train archery seven times a week. And then I usually go to the gym uh, three to five times a week as well. Wow, my friend, that is that is amazing. That is, um, I guess that's kind of you know, you you, you uh, honestly, it's it's tough to do that here, right? It's tough to do that much archery. Yeah. So, is archery a big sport in Sweden? Or? Not at all. It's uh, one of the smallest sports. So we have ten thousand archers in Sweden, I think. And only like maybe 
500 of them compete. So it's a really small sport. Right, right. So how, are you doing anything to bring awareness to, or, or do you want to do something to bring more awareness? I mean, you, like you said, you have an amazing shooting team. I mean, world class, obviously world class. Yeah, the Verbo community in Sweden is amazing, but unfortunately it's quite small. So, but we have tried like reaching out to some newspapers and uh, some television. And I've actually been in the newspaper the most times for a Swedish archer since 1996, I think. Wow. Well, you're just crushing it though. I mean, you're just doing everything right. I, I don't know. I, like everything you're doing is is perfect, and you compete a lot. Like how many how many competitions do you have you done this year, for example? This year has been quite slow in competitions, so I've only done like ten, fifteen, maybe. In a normal year, I compete one to two times every weekend. Wow, that's pretty good. And how many of those ten or fifteen have you actually won or placed? three uh, top three is every competition and uh, i've won everything except for now the world games and won the 3d competition and i placed second for the swedish nationals indoor wow. everything is just first place and so you're you're shooting field 3d uh outdoor so you're shooting 50 meter uh, yeah, you, you, know, you obviously shoot an indoor. You were you were over here for Lancaster, right? And it's just it's just amazing to see how many young folks were uh, on the stage at Lancaster. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. So you you shoot everything, every. And what's your favorite? My favorite is field, and then of course I like target and three D, but field is my favorite. Hey, tell me why. Tell us a bit why field is is your favorite. I think it's the culture in Sweden where we have such a like strong history and some really awesome shooters. This for a bear archer in Sweden, it's really easy to love field because everybody does it. Okay. There's just this thing about field in Sweden. So it seems that like you do it a little bit more. Um, it's it's beautiful too, right? Like when you actually go out. I, I don't know about here, but I, it's so hot. It's so hot and going yeah. up and down the hills and stuff like that. Uh, but there you have like beautiful trees, you have beautiful forests, you have like ancient forests and stuff like that that you can go through. Just amazing. I've seen yeah. some pictures. I think I think back who else is, I, you know, the different people I know that are over in Sweden. But uh, I have a cousin that's actually living in Stockholm right now too. But um, yeah. but yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, I just think that you guys are really interesting. How many languages do you speak? I speak Swedish, English, and uh, then Norwegian and Danish are basically the same as Swedish, so we understand each other. Yeah. And then I can make my, I can have a small conversation in uh, French as well. That's odd. That's so amazing. <laughs> but, no, I mean, it is amazing for Americans. Right? I'm Canadian, but yeah. you know, I live in the U.S. And uh, just, it's just yeah. amazing that you guys can speak so many different languages. And, understand that and the culture is just yeah, phenomenal do you uh what how so give us your honest feedback on on the last time you were here in the united states how was it did you, did you have fun it was really fun but in alabama i think it's what it was a bit too hot for me it was like 35 to 40 degrees celsius that was just too much yeah but you but perform. this day was fun yeah, you, you, you performed well, even though it was hot. Yeah. You still did a really good job. You came here, got your job done. Hey, um, let's step back just a little bit, though. And I appreciate you sharing so much and, and being open. Um, I kind of want to understand how you got into archery. How did you start off in archery? I actually started quite late when I was 12 years old, I think, 12 or 13. And uh, first I tried at like a day where you children could try different sports like uh, American football or football as you say and baseball and stuff like that and then I just tried archery and thought it was fun and then we went to a local bow shop and 
bought a bow and shot some at home. And then I started at a club here in Stockholm. And then I just continued with their bow. That's, but was there any, did you have any coaching? Did you know what Barebow was at the time? Or The club I started was quite heavily focused on Barebow. And I had uh, one coach called Rune. And he was like my coach for the first three years, I think. I don't know who that and is. he was <laughs> just. Hi, Leo, who sat behind you saying hi? <laughs> Your door just opened up. <laughs> That's my dad. my dad. He's trying to peek in. Hi, Dad. Makes it hello. Goodbye, Dad. <laughs> That's nice. He's curious. On you. That's fun. That's fun. So you started off at like 12, 13, and you say that's late. And uh, I, I find that, that that's that's pretty early. I think that's pretty good. And, and then you've been doing this uh, more than five years, six years. Then. Yeah. Uh, so you're 19, you're going to be 19. You did start at 13 and you get like six years of under your, your belt. And did you, and you had a good coach there while you were at, uh, is that, did you get a good coach? Sorry. Yeah, I, missed. I had, he's not the best coach, but he was just perfect for me at the beginning. So he just, he told me stuff that was easy to understand and showed me how to like shoot. And he was also friends with one of the best shooters in Sweden in the early 2000s. Okay. So he knew a lot of Barbo. All right. So did you, so are you still being coached or are you just doing it all on your own? At the moment, I don't have a coach for like the uh, form and stuff like that. That's just my own thing. And I ask like Eric Johnson and frederick and martin for advice mm -hmm. but for like competitions and the mental coach i have my dad so he's been working as a sports coach since he was 15 wow on different levels that that's great is your dad an athlete as well uh, he was an athlete until he broke his knee but uh, now he started archery because he was bored sitting and watching me train all the time is he any good? Do you beat your dad all the time? <laughs> I beat him all the time. He's no good at all. I think he has a couple of uh, Swedish medals from the nationals. So he's okay, but nothing more than that. <laughs> That's mean to don't. You gotta be nice to your dad. You gotta be a little bit nicer to your dad. You're you're getting to that age where you know you're gonna move out soon, and so. Uh, you know, you won't get to see him as much. So just be nice to him. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's go to equipment. Let's go to equipment. What do you, what what uh, what gear are you shooting? Uh, what did you bring here to shoot the um, to shoot the world game? Yeah, I uh, brought my Gelo GT riser okay. uh, for my primary bow. I shot a twenty five inch, and for my spare bow, I had my twenty seven inch. So I'm planning to switch over to my 27 inch this fall okay. and for the indoor season. And then I had my Gelo GTL 88 limbs, yeah. uh, medium length and 38 pounds. And then my AC arrows with the uh, yellow veins on them. Okay. So are you 38 pounds on the fingers then? I think it's 39. I It was... Yeah, yeah, thirty nine it is. And no pro no problem shooting field with that at all. No, I have a point on at sixty meters, I think. So it's just perfect for field, I think. Yeah, that is pretty good. That is that's that's a really nice setup there. And you're obviously shooting it really, really well. So uh that's important <laughs> too, right? So no, with that only the material. Yeah, well, I guess your your mental. Let's talk a little bit about your shot process and your mental game. Um, so, can you take me through your? Do you mind taking us through your shot process if you don't mind sharing that? Of course, uh, my shot process is actually quite simple. It uh, consists of four steps. I, so, when I have like the arrow on the string and I'm at at my anchor point, I just think push forwards with the bow arm pull backwards with the other, aim in the middle. And when everything is perfect, I just think release and arrow just 
releases. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it don't. More often than not, it, it hits perfectly. Uh, the, yeah, because we've seen you shoot already. So, hey, all right. So you're at so getting to anchor though. Let's let's talk a little bit about all right. So your setup. You're walking yeah. on a field course. Um, you're coming up to the stake for the first first. You know the the very the very first uh, target. Like I want yeah. I want to hear all the way from there. Like mentally, like I want to hear your mental stuff, your preparation. You're coming up to this target. What are you doing? Before the competition, I usually listen to some music, and then it's either ACDC or something like that, yeah. or uh, some songs from my favorite soccer club here in Stockholm, okay. just to get me in the like the right mindset and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. The and then when I get to like the shooting position, I try to be aggressive but still calm and not overthink anything. Just do what I can because I. I know that if I do a good shot, it hits, and I know I can do a good shot. Okay, so you I get, just try to. Yeah, you get, you, can, you, you get up to the target. You set your feet. Are you an open stance or a closed stance or neutral or? Uh, uh, just in between neutral, neutral and open. So it's okay. quite neutral, but still a bit open. Okay, and then. You you raise your bow arm. You're pulling back at the same time. You and where do you anchor? Do you anchor on the side of your face, behind your jaw? Yeah, in, in the corner of my mouth. Okay, just in the corner of your mouth. So you bring it up. Are you closing? Uh, so are you settling on the target? Are you settling on, in this case, you know, the blue or the gold, for example? Are you settling on the gold, yeah. and your your uh, your arrow tip is right in the middle of the gold, or are you underneath? Yeah, it? that's. I'm in the middle, but for indoors, I shoot lollipop. So indoors, I'm underneath, but outdoors, I'm in the middle. Okay. All right. That's interesting. That's interesting that you change it up a little bit. And then, like you said, you're pushing, you're pulling, and you're pushing, and then you just release and yeah. and let it happen, right? Um, yeah. So do you – once you've made that shot and – maybe it didn't hit where you exactly want it to go do you go through something after the shot and say hey this is what i did right or this is what i did wrong or do you just go nah go on to the next shot if it's a good shot that or at least that it hits good i usually just try to like get back in the mindset and just shoot another one like it yeah but if it ends up missing the target or hitting where it's not supposed to be i usually go through every step of the shot over in my head mm -hmm. and then try to correct my mistake for the next shot. Okay. All right. All right. It's been successful. You've been, you've been really, really yeah. successful, but do you think, do you think it's cause you're young and you're brave? And yeah, at the moment, I think it's mostly that because I haven't been exposed to, the big competitions yet or at least not understood what the big competition is i'm still to learn how it is to like shoot oh my gosh you, you like eric johnson has done yeah eric eric's been a you know a crazy good shooter uh yeah. and and crazy amazing scores like amazing scores like you know you would think that that was a compound the guy was a compound shooter the way he scores <laughs> You know, so, uh, but, but, uh, you too, as well, you're, 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 you're doing really, really well too, in terms of scoring. I think, um, yeah, I think it's working, whatever you're doing is working, but, and you've been at all the big tournaments, what big tournament haven't you done? I, I think I've done all the big ones for Barbo, but my goal is to go to Vegas as well next year, just yeah. because it's yeah. the Vegas shoot. I get that. So you'll be over here for so you you probably stay a whole week, uh, two weeks here in in the U.S. Right? You'd probably come over, do Lancaster, and then go to Vegas right after. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Hopefully. Makes sense. You can you can get some money, get earn, earn a bunch of money, stay here, hang yeah. out, uh, <laughs> immigrate to the U.S., become a U.S. team member. You know, whatever, whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah yeah hey man um how about some advice for uh someone who's listening right now and wants to shoot somewhere close to what you're shooting like how can you get someone 
what was that what would be that one piece of advice that leo would give these guys to to to, to get better immediately yeah, the one advice that i give people is that believe in yourself even though everybody says it says it i think it's the most important step on the way to become successful in anything just believe in yourself believe in your process and never doubt anything but always question stuff question it but don't yeah how do you do how do you do that mentally mentally how do you it's i i it seems so hard for me as like as a shooter too that's nowhere near your quality obviously um it, it's just the mental game is the one that usually um kind of messes everyone up really i mean physically once you learn to get to anchor you have the same anchor you're repeatable it's just then mentally you're just like i can't get my point on target or you have target panic or you or you just you just don't believe in yourself you know you shoot a good shot and you're like "Eh, that's not me I need to be shooting bad shots so how do you do it how do you mentally get there I think that has a lot to do with the target panic I had a couple of years ago because I went through like doubting myself and not believing in myself and then one day Martin Ottosson then Eric Johnson told me to just focus up do this do that and then come back and i think the process of getting through target panic has helped me to get to where i am today because the toughest thing for an archer is having target panic and getting over it i think yeah tell me tell me about that tell me about what did they tell you what did you do what was the thing that you how did you overcome it it, it was in the beginning it was a lot of short distances and blank bales and stuff like that or big targets and then slowly moving back and going to further distances and then shrinking shrinking the targets as well and just being comfortable understood and just it's really boring so i stood <laughs> on two meters for i think it was like three months no target face or nothing just shooting really and trying to like just get to anchor in the beginning i released two inches from my face and then oh you slowly have i worked my bay my way back wow you so have... that uh, has that was tough mentally but i think it's helped a lot what did you say to yourself to get you th- get through that boredom though like how did you say like i've got to get better i want to be better i want to be the best in the world is that what you're kind of saying to yourself did you say i know i believe in myself i know i can be the best in the world yeah since day one i've always heard from both my dad and my first coach that you have what it takes to become the best but you need to work hard so if you work hard you can become the best and that mindset has always stuck with me even through target panic yeah nothing's more motivating than that that is fantastic dude I, i'm just I, like seriously leo that is no having your dad say hey you could be the best in the world it's just up to you because a lot of us yeah. like i don't ever think no one's ever told me hey mick you can be the best in the world and and I, and so like when i'm training i'm like what am i sometimes i question myself what am i training so hard for it's like i'm never going to be the best in the world so i'm never going to be the best even in you know my state so why like you know because then then there's no motivation there right the motivation is just like do better than the day before um i love your i love that thinking though it's like we should be telling our athletes hey you can be the best in the world you just got to put the work of their effort into it yeah yeah and i think you know everybody has what it takes you just have to put in the work and put in time to do it yeah, I'm going to disagree on that. I think that yeah. some of us just don't. Some of us don't care enough. I mean, I guess I guess you have to be pre-wired. Um, yeah. and I think of that course. you come from an athletic family. It sounds like you're, you know, your dad was an a- athlete for a while. Um, you know, you probably have a better understanding of what a professional athlete should do to become a professional athlete. And you are quite quite seriously a professional athlete at 19 years old you you've been in every major tournament that i can think of and you well not vegas but and that's 
<laughs> anyway, anyway, I think you've been, you've done a lot. You're going to go to Worlds uh, 3D, uh, which will be really cool. I cannot wait to see you. I think this, you know, are they still going to do it like in a castle, the shoot offs in a castle and stuff like that? I don't know. Yeah, yeah right. I think so. That is or the some most ruins at least. The ruins, like that is the most exciting event I've ever seen in my entire life. You know that YouTube yeah. video? You know what I'm talking about, Leo? You know the one that where the uh, – uh, for me, I'm watching the Americans, right? So, you know, yeah. there was there was Dwayne and um, and uh, I forget who the compound shooter was and uh, Calvin. Uh, and then, you know, so they had the – they had the um, they had the longbow guys. Then they had the barebow guys and they had the compound guys. Is that still a format yeah. that they do over there? Is that Will that happen, a team shoot? You know? Yeah, I, uh, I think there will be a team shoot. Uh, so hopefully I'll be on team, but uh, we're going to send Frederick Lundmark as well. So it's, yeah. it's not easy to no, be yeah. ranked number one in Sweden. No. <laughs> it's and be on the team for the men's no, competition. No, it's not. Um, but that's an exciting shoot. I hope you do. I hope I get to, yeah. a chance to see you in the – in the castle or the ruins or whatever it is. Cause I just think that as a, as a, as a spectator, a person who loves uh, to watch uh, bare uh, competitors, I love watching you shoot. Obviously I loved watching the younger guys shoot. Uh, honestly, I know we didn't, you know, Aaron made it to the finals for the female yeah. on that side, which was fantastic. Maggie, I love watching her shoot. Um, you know, love watching you shoot, you know, just the young crowd coming up. Cause there are some yeah. targets like Eric's got some world records that, and then Demer's got some world records that you guys, you guys will at your age, if you keep going on, you'll, you'll crush those records. You'll crush them. So we'll have to see. I'll have to see. I'm, 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 I'm excited. Hey, um, thanks for chatting with us. Did you, do you, where can people reach out to you and, and chat with you and on social? Uh, mostly on my Instagram, Leo Barbo Archer and uh, uh, and my Facebook as well, Leo Petterson. Yeah. So just reach out to me. I'll be in yeah. touch. Absolutely, yeah. Reach out to Leo, man. If you want to know more about this, and you know, you're, um, you know, it just just connecting internationally is really good. And I do appreciate this, man. I, I really yeah. appreciate that you could make time for this show. Uh, we don't get a lot of international people on here, so it's great when you know a champion is on the show. Uh, appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's, honestly, no, seriously, seriously, you're you're yeah. you're gonna be. I'm I'm excited to watch you progress. I'm excited to watch all the young people progress. But you know, you're doing something special out there. So keep up the good work, and uh, you know, good luck in the rest of the tournaments. Um, I'll be Thank cheering you. for you. I really appreciate uh, you being on the show. All right, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Um, until we talk again, man. Hunt the good stuff. We'll talk to you later.